Hello everybody, welcome to Everton Live, welcome to Goodison Park, welcome to a brand new era. Frank Lampard's Everton take on Brentford in the FA Cup fifth round. So, so excited for this one, honestly. What a whirlwind couple of weeks it's been for Everton, but yeah, the new gaffer's here and we're ready to go. Let's have a quick look at what's to come for you here today on Everton Live. So we will have an interview with major shareholder Farhad Mashiri for you. The player arrivals, of course. Team news from both Everton and Brentford. We'll have highlights from the last round as we knocked out Hull in the fourth round of the cup. New signing Delhi and Delhi, excuse me. New signing Delhi Ali interview as he spoke to us earlier this week. Sligo Rovers interview. We've got a strategic partnership with them that we're excited to tell you all about. Donny van der Beek from Frank Lampard and live commentary will be on EvertonFC.com. See, I'm too excited. I can't get my words out today. Uh, so that's what we've got to come for you. But first, let's hear from Farhad Mashiri. Mr Mashiri, you've got your man. How pleased are you? I'm really delighted. He's an impressive young man on and off the pitch. You can quickly relate to him. There is a positivity and confidence that comes through. Uh, the more you see him, the more you like him. He's just a very likable man. And I'm really pleased with uh, security services. Just off camera there, you mentioned that he was a very impressive man and that comes from his football background. I think it's his, the fact that he's from a footballing family is in his blood. Uh, a, a winner, uh, played at the highest level of the English game. I think he will bring, uh, will give the team an immediate boost. The dressing room would always rise to someone of his character and achievement. And uh, I'll support him with providing the system to support him. So I think the process is vital to ensure all components of Everton will support the manager. We've got to get behind the manager and give him that Goodison feeling, that Goodison force. And I think success will come with that. The fans will welcome Frank Lampard with open arms, quite rightly so. How important are the fans to this whole they process? They are the most important. You can buy any player. You can't buy the 12th man. And I think the biggest thing today for us for me, Bill, all parts of this great, beautiful club is to get behind this manager, unite. So let's get together, unite behind the team, give them the 12th man and start moving up the table. So my message is our future is bright. We just need to be united from fans, which are the most important part. And I believe in our fans. Uh, maybe we, together, me and the fans, we should be more patient. I'm also impatient. The recruitment process was structured. It was done diligently, respectfully. You know, we ensured uh, there a lot of expertise goes into it. So we had Graham Sharp uh, with his vast football experience, board level. Tim Cahill was advising me personally, attending all the interviews. He did very diligent, uh, serious work. Frank mentioned the passion from yourself and the chairman, the enthusiasm from yourself and the chairman that helped sway him to come to Everton. How, in, how important is the friendship and the relationship that you have with the chairman? Oh, it's very important. We are keeping the chairman as long as we can. And I think he manfully fulfills his functions. Uh, and, you know, I really appreciate what the chairman does. Throughout the field, the team, their strengths. Um, so I think just to get a boost, a confidence, they get the confidence back, and then the Goodison crowd give them the 12th man. is the most important signing we can get in this window. You know, I'm optimistic.
So there we have it, Farhad Mashiri on the appointment of Frank Lampard. Delighted to be joined by Ian Snowden. Thank you very much, Snod. Sarah. We were just looking on the big screen there, some highlights from the 5-1. I mean, you were very upset that it cut off before your goal was sold well, against Sheffield Wednesday. The game, it was, it was against Sheffield Wednesday. It was a cup replay. I think it was about the second or third replay at Hillsborough. We managed to win 5-0 and I got the fifth one. And it cut off after Sharpie's chip. I think that was the third goal. And I'm thinking, I'm stood here, I'm waiting, I'm thinking. I said, Sarah, you'll see my goal in a minute. We were waiting, weren't we? And it just went off. So who do we complain to, Who's please? done that? We'll, we'll find you. We'll find out. Was it I you want to see my goal on that big screen. I only got seven, so I, I want to see that one. We were waiting, weren't we? We were absolutely we furious. <laughs> it's brilliant stuff. Back on to Frank Lampard as well. Firstly, massive, massive news for Everton Football Club that he is the new manager. How do you feel about the appointment, Snods? Same as everybody else. I, I think everybody's excited. Um, what, what I'm getting, the feeling from all Evertonians, is, uh, yeah, it's, it's a fresh start. Um, he did ever so well with Derby County in his first job, did ever so well with Chelsea in his first season. All right, things didn't go right the second season, but he's fresh, he's young, he's brought some good coaching staff with him. Uh, Ashley Cole who's just joined us as well apparently he's up and coming but we know what a player he was we know what a player Frank Lampard were that doesn't go to say because you were a good player you were a great player don't mean to say you were a great manager but I think what he's got he's got charisma about him he's done it apparently he's gone into Finch Farm and he's welcomed everybody not just the players the staff all the staff I love that when he goes up to people Mary on the reception and people in the canteen Make them all feel wanted. Make them all feel part of Everton Football Club. Because they are. They're working there day to day. They're treating them players. They're, they're, they're feeding them. They're waiting on for them. They're washing the kits. They're doing everything. So they are part of the team. And if your manager, a new manager, can go in and, and introduce himself to them, it means hell of a lot. So hopefully there's a big smile back at Fings Farm. Hopefully there's, a, there's an atmosphere this afternoon. Full house. Wow. Aww. Full house. Um, It'd be great to greet Frank and his coaching staff. I'm sure at some point of the day uh, during the match, the players, the new players, the two new players will get introduced as well. So, But more importantly, we want to be in the at. Forget, forget about applauding the new players. And at the end of the game, we want to be applauding a team that's got us through to the fifth round of the FA Cup. That's what I want. That's what 40,000 spectators want. So, come on. Bring the, on. On. Yes. Bring the game on. Bring the game on. Bring the game on, absolutely. Now, we have been here before, of course, you know, a couple of weeks ago before the break. It was disappointing to see us lose to Aston Villa, mm. but it was brilliant to see Duncan Ferguson in charge. There was obviously a bit of a, a spike in the atmosphere there, but today, this is, this is our new manager for the foreseeable, isn't it? This is someone who, I think it's safe to say in that press conference, was absolutely spot on, said everything that, as a fan, you want to hear... As soon as I listened to that, I just couldn't wait to get into the ground and watch this, this team play. So he's a, he's a well-educated man, mm -hmm. he's Frank Lampard. Everybody knows that. He's had a great upbringing with his, with his father, with his uncles as well. They've all played football. So uh, he, he knows football inside out. And he's produced at football level in terms of his career. He's played for England. He's played for the like European champions. He's played for the FA Cup winners. He, he's, he's been a top, top player. Now I'm hoping that he's going to be a top, top manager with Everton Football Club. We've got, we'll, we'll have to give him time. We don't want to be chopping and changing managers as we have been doing for the last five or six years. We want Frank Lampard to produce the goods, the players to produce the goods. Frank Lampard be here for many, many years. Then it shows we've been a successful team. Um, I'm excited, I'm buzzing. And hopefully great times, good times, great times around the corner for this football club. That's what we want to hear, isn't it? Great times, good times, great times, all mm. of it. We want it back here at Everton Football Club. And here are the players arriving today under their new manager, Frank Lampard. Now, we're going to have the team news soon as well, Snods, but I just want to ask you about, you know, who, who do you pick out today? Obviously, Deli Ali um, won't be eligible to play, so no. Donny van der Beek as well. Aye. Very much looking forward to seeing them uh, in the week against sure. Newcastle. But they are cover tight for today's game. So who do you look at? You know, is it the youngsters like Anthony Gordon? Uh, Dobbin, players like that. You Do you know, know I, I feel that Frank will go... I don't think he'll he'll pick the team that, say, uh, yeah. perhaps Duncan Ferguson might have picked. He might have been saying in Frank's ear, he'll be doing that. Know, I, I think... I was driving in today, I'm thinking, I think Frank might go on what he's seen this week in training. Who's looked the part, who's done the part, who's worked the hardest, who looks, who looks up for it. I think he'll pick his own team today somehow. 
don't know who he'll pick. It'll be interesting. Don't know where I. Dominic Calvert Lewin's a, a big blow that he won't be playing, so I'm expecting Richarlison to be the to the, be the main striker. I don't know who will play our, either side. Damari Gray, you've got to think, will be one of them because his forms are exceptional. But I don't know who's going to play centre back. I don't know who's going to play full back. So it'd be intriguing me as well as the as well as the fans. But uh, whoever plays, it, it's a game that Brentford won't relish this today. No. New manager, great atmosphere inside this ground. You don't want that as a as a, as a, as a opposition team. You don't want the other team to change the manager before you play them and, and stuff like that. They might have been half fancying the chances when the draw were made, but now it's a totally different scenario inside this ground, hopefully. And uh, they might cheer us on to a, hopefully a victory. Well, let's hope so. And, you know, as you said, we're, we're yet to see what team Frank Lampard is going to pick for his first ever match in mm. charge of Everton Football Club. But, you know, we're yet to see uh, Patterson make his debut, yep. for example. Now, we know Frank Lampard likes attacking fast young wing backs. Do you think Patterson might get the well, nod it today? Wouldn't surprise me. Wouldn't surprise me. Both of you two kids are at wing backs. Mm -hmm. uh, Frank might play three centre backs uh, and the two wing backs. Who knows? Time will tell in a minute. But, yeah, I think I think the two uh, the two young kids that were brought in uh, just before the deadline as well. I think they could be involved uh, certainly in some part of today's game. Absolutely. Well, we'll be getting that in just under three minutes now, so we'll soon have Frank Lampard's first start in eleven for you. Are there any other players that you know you look at today that might fancy their chances to come in? As I mentioned before, you know we saw Jared Brandthwaite there as well coming in. He did ever so well when he's been called upon in the past earlier in the season. Anthony Gordon has been superb in, yep. you know, what have been disappointing results recently. Anthony Gordon has been one of the bright sparks. Do you think he'll be in there today? I can't see why not. Um, he's got a buzz about him at the minute, hasn't he? When he came on the other day against Villa as well, he, he looked lively as soon as he came on. and So he'd be disappointed that he didn't start against Villa, I would have thought so. Uh, so did a few uh, fans, they thought uh, Andy perhaps should have started. But it's all, it's all a fresh start for him. Uh, they've got to prove now to the manager that they're worthy of a place, that they're willing to run the hearts out for the for the badge. And uh, so it's entirely up to the player. So, and if everybody's got that determination in them collectively, that goes very well for the football team. So it's down to the players themselves. If they're not selected by Frank Lampard for the next few weeks, that's down to them. That's not down to Frank Lampard. That's down to them not showing him what what they are all about as a football player. Now, if they do start and show him in training, yeah, I'm up for this. I'm ready. I'm sure they'll get selected. So it's not about Frank Lampard, it's about the players themselves. It's up to them to go and do the business. It is. The boys have got to go out there today and do the business. We're very much hoping that we are going to be in that hat for the next round. And, you know, a good cup run, we'd love that, wouldn't we? We'd love to get to Wembley and to a final again. It'd be exceptional. But on today's opposition as well, Brentford, as you said, probably not going to be fancying this one. Mm. They might have one eye on the league as well, of course. It'd be massive for them to stay in the Premier League. But they have some real quality in that team, you know, especially Ivan Toni is the obvious one to go for. He's always going to be a threat. Isn't yeah, he? yeah, he is. But I looked at the game when we played him in the league and we didn't play particularly well. But I still thought that Brentford were there for the taking. Yeah. I thought we should have got something definitely out of that game, at least a point. I thought we should have won the game, if I'm perfectly honest. So I'm not really worried about Brentford. I'm more worried about how we play. And that, that's one thing that the managers that I played at under didn't really used to worry about the opposition too much. It was all about your own team. If you had your own team in order, then let them worry about you. And if our boys are up for this from three o'clock onwards, let Brentford worry about us. Let's not. Yeah, they have got some good players, got some exciting players, but hopefully we've got better players on the day that are more up for it. A cup ties, a cup tie. The, the FA Cup means so much to Everton Football Club, to, to the fans. A trip to Wembley, they, we just need some success. Let's start here today. Let's start and let's get into this next round. That's what we want, isn't it? I mean, I absolutely love the FA Sarah, Cup. Sarah, there's nothing worse than watching the FA Cup draw and you're not in it. Yeah. The excitement is watching that FA Cup draw to see who you're going to get picked out. If you're not in it, don't even have it on. The telly on, so 
be in the act. That's all I'm asking. Absolutely. And of course, we saw Manchester United last night as well, uh, knocked out by Middlesbrough. So we're seeing big teams going out already. But here we go then. The team news is in. Frank Lampard starting 11 today. So in goal, of course, you'd expect number one, Jordan Pickford. He's gone with number four, Mason Holgate. Number five, Michael Keane. Six, Alan. Seven, Richarlison. Number 11, Damari Gray. 19, Vitelli Mikalenko. Number 21, Andre Gomez. 22, Ben Godfrey. 23, Seamus Coleman gets the nod to start today, so there is no Patterson. 24, Anthony Gordon. Brilliant to see him in that start in 11. I'm sure the fans will be made up with that. And now for the Brentford starting 11. In goal, David Rea. Got number three, Rico Henry. Number six, Christian Norgard. Seven, Sergi Canyos. Eight, Matthias Jensen. Number 17, there's that danger man that we've spoken about, Ivan Tony. Number 18, Pontus Janssen. 20, Christopher Adger. Number 27, Vitaly Janalt. Number 29, Mad, Mads Becht Sorensen. And number 30, Mads Roslev as well. So those are the teams for Everton today. What do we think of them? Interested with uh, some of the some of the players in the uh, Everton starting eleven there. I was a little bit surprised. Two wing backs, it looks mm -hmm. like, and uh, three centre backs in Godfrey Olgate. What it looks like anyway. Um, on paper, Michael Keane coming back in. Uh, Alan and Gomez midfield. So Richarlison will be the striker. So uh, yeah, it's a strong enough team to win that game. Let's wait for kickoff. I can, you can say no more. Frank Lampard's done his stuff. He, he's picked his team. That's all he can do now. He can encourage them, give them a G up before they come out. But once they cross that white line, Sarah, there's only them players that are, are starting the game and then the, them that are going to come on, if anybody's going to come on, can change the game. Frank Lampard's not going to, Ashley Cole's not going to go on there and Duncan Briggs and, and change the game. Them players have got to do it. It's as simple as that. It is, you're absolutely right. And I think, you know, in, in Frank Lampard's press conference as well, he said as much as he's the man that's come in and he will be the sort of face of and the head of this, this new era for Everton Football Club, he's coming to make a difference. But it is on the players as well. They're the ones every, every day in, in training, putting the work in on the pitch. And, you know, they've got to come out here. Like you said, you've got Ashley Cole, Frank Lampard, Duncan, all the amazing backroom staff now. But it's those 11 players that are going to walk out onto the pitch today that are the ones that have got to deliver the performance. And, Hopefully, you know, we know these fans are going to be bouncing because of everything that's going on. But yeah. We want to see the team giving us something to, you know, Lampard, progressive, aggressive, attacking. You think we'll see that today from this team? Well, I hope so. Uh, I know I know it's early doors. He's only been in the door since Monday, really. He took his first training session it's five days ago. So you're not going to see a, a massive difference as yet. But I'm sure over in, over in time that you will do. You'll see Frank playing the football that he, or Everton playing the football that Frank wants to play. Now, I believe also at, at times the players have got to take responsibility themselves, look at themselves. I, I played in teams during my career where the managers got sacked, and yeah, you feel sorry for the manager, but then you look at yourselves and think, could I have done more to save that manager from his job? Could I have run that extra yard? Could I have got that extra tattling? Could I have run into the box? Create so look at yourself as a player. And now the, the boys are on a level playing field again. There's no, no stars about us. The, the, the new management's come in and they'll be looking at all the same. There's nobody, they'll not be looking at Richarlison and saying he's a permanent in every one of my team. They'll be looking and think, right, who's going to be in my team? Who's going to show me in training? Who's going to show me on a Saturday or a midweek that they deserve to be in this team? It's a fresh start. That's how I like it. Absolutely, everyone with a clean slate and, you know, 11 playing field, as you said, fighting to get into that team. Now, if you're Vitaly Mikolenko and you see the likes of Leighton Baines, Ashley Cole in the staff, that must be great for a young left wing back, hasn't it? You know, these are true... I'm just hoping he's heard of them. <laughs> Surely he's heard of them. I know, to have, I know he's from the. I know, I know he's from the uh, Ukraine, but, uh, yeah, they are... Ashley Cole has been one of Europe's best left backs for many years. Uh, so... Uh, and he's got Leighton Baines, who is an absolute legend at this club, for his goals, for his performances for over 10 years. So I'm sure uh, they'll have definitely said something to him. The world's at his feet. He's moved to a big club, in Everton Football Club. You could see he was a little bit nervous. He's still a young boy. He's come from a 
foreign country, he's still a young lad. Yeah, he's going to be nervous, and he was nervous, you could tell, at, at Hull and at the game, the game afterwards that he played. So give him time to settle down, give him time to establish himself in the team, acclimatise to the country as well, and I'm sure he will learn off two of the best left-backs that England's seen for many, many years. Absolutely. Certainly not a bad position for Mikalenko to be in, learning off those two. But we have got Brentford today. Let's throw it back to Hull and how we got here. It's FA Cup third round weekend. The Blues are here determined to show resolve and spirit and progress to the fourth round. Kevin Friend, who's had 11 games this season, six of them in the Premier League. He was last in charge of an Everton game in that 2 2 draw in the League Cup. Everton losing the penalty shootout and losing a goal inside the first minute here. What a flying start indeed. Damari Gray faced by Bernard. Damari Gray into the penalty, he uses Gordon, it's back into the path of Gray, it's a wonderful Everton goal, beautiful football. It was quality, and Everton need to show more of their Premier League pedigree. Everton are coming forward again, it's Damari Gray. Plays it wide for John Joe Kenny, who drills one into the penalty area. It's cleared as far as Andre Gomez, 10 yards outside the box. Gomez turns and plays it square for Gordon. He's trying to tee it up for a shot at goal. Instead, he uses John Joe Kenny. Kenny's cut back and it's headed home. And Everton lead by two goals to one. And Andre Gomez scores for Everton. A diving header from Andre Gomez. Run back by Huddleston for Hull. He uses Moncur, edge of the penalty area. Moncur teeing it up for Longman, and Longman scored! Longman's curled one in from outside the box. Hull have possession. Well, momentarily, they've given it straight to, to Gabamin, who finds Townsend. Townsend goes for goal from distance, it's a brilliant goal! Andros Townsend does it again from distance! They have beaten Hull in extra time. It's finished, Hull City 2, Everton 3. Hello, welcome back to Everton Live. Absolutely delighted to be joined by Sligo head chairman Tommy and we've got the head of academy as well Connor thank you so much for joining us both here today now I want to talk to you about the strategic partnership that Everton have formed with Sligo Rovers as well and how big that is for the club yeah it's been it's been uh, great and uh, we've been on, having ongoing chats over the last year unfortunately Covid stopped us from being able to visit and, and today we've, we've, we're having our first visit with the club and uh, hopefully there'll be more visits to come and uh, you know we've had a you know great partnership so far great communication and it's great to be able to meet in person today oh, it's brilliant to have you here and I believe you know during the pandemic the Covid times there was a lot of money raised wasn't there crowdfunding as well to, to help Sligo through those times yeah the supporters uh, put their hand in their pocket as they always do in Sligo and, and, and got behind us and uh, you know we had a very good season we qualified for Europe again and, and uh, hopefully we're starting again in a few weeks. Our season is starting with the first team and our academies are starting on the 5th of March. So, uh, yeah, we're looking to hopefully have a season like last year. It's fantastic to see us because, of course, the season before that, Sligo were kind of struggling, weren't they? And you came back and, you know, back in Europe, that's massive for the club. Yeah, massive. You know, it's um, obviously it keeps this man here beside us very happy, the chairman. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's, look, it's financially, it's huge for us, but it's also a great experience for our players and our fans. And, you know, we're on the, the northwest of Ireland, you know, we're a couple of hours away from Dublin. So it's, uh, it, it, it's easier for us to attract players, etc., etc. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's been a great few years. It's brilliant to see. Um, it really is. And I'll get to you about Seamus Coleman as well in a short while because I know you used to play with him. But Tommy, now the chairman, um, the strategic yes. partnership with Everton Football Club 
it's massive, isn't it, for both parties? Absolutely, it's really wonderful. And there's, I mean, there's a long, long history with Everton and Sligo Rovers going back to Dixie Dean when he came in the 1930s. So uh, it's a we're, we're delighted with this opportunity, and I think there's a great future ahead for both Everton and for Sligo Rovers. It's fantastic. As you, you know, we mentioned Seamus Coleman, but of course Dixie Dean, you know, the greatest ever to wear that yes. royal blue, and yeah. he he played there. So he played for a season and did wonderful. We got us to a cup final. So. He's still revered, and we have his image up on our outside uh, museum there, so it's wonderful. That's fantastic. Yeah. I'm yeah. going to have to come down and, uh, and, and, Absolutely. and see. You're, you're all very welcome. Oh, you see, this is another brilliant thing, you know. Now we've got so many Evertonians back in Sligo as well, and vice versa. Yeah. It's great to have these partnerships, isn't it, as well with uh, the Premier League club? Yes, it's only a 40-minute flight, and there's another 40 minutes to Sligo, so it's very close. I go after this, Tommy. Don't, I think. Don't worry. <laughs> so, you know, in terms of the, you know, the strategic partnership as well. Obviously, Everton's academy, Sligo's academy. It's going to help with access to to various things from each club, isn't it? It's going to be massive yeah. for both clubs. Well, I like, maybe Connor, yeah, Connor. 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 yeah. Look, I suppose I've been in contact a lot with Paddy Byrne, the international manager here at Everton. Uh, we've been under master classes, a lot of the Everton master classes, with the goalkeeping one with Kevin O'Brien. And, you know, it's, it's been great to be, uh, get in contact with other clubs, the other affiliated clubs around the world as well. So, yeah, we've enjoyed it. As I said, we haven't really had a chance to do much in person. Our under-14 team come over at the end of the month. We're here for a weekend at the end of the month, which has been greatly organised in, in conjunction with Paddy. So, yeah, there's a lot of technical stuff to go on going forward, as, as Tommy said. But... Yeah, I think this is the start of something very good. And as you said there, we've a lot of we've a great history with Everton. We've a lot of Evertonians in the town, uh, as we do in the country. But I think with this partnership, I think you'll see a lot more Evertonians in the, in Sligo. Absolutely. Well, I'll, I'll be getting there at some point this season. Absolutely, no doubt about that. Really excited as well. Um, Seamus Coleman, an Everton true Everton legend. It's been 13 years he's been at this great club now. And he's a product of Sligo. You know, 60,000 pounds. The famous song goes, "You played alongside him." What was Seamus like as a young player? I think what you've what you seen him here was the same Seamus that we had at Sligo, you know, really honest, hard-working, humble, great fella. Um, you know, everything he, everything he got he deserved. Um, I think everyone that played with him really loved him. He was just a good lad and hasn't changed one bit, you know, and I think that's, been, that's the great, great strength of him. I, you know, he's revered, re revered here for a reason because of, of what he done for the club and, you know, we're, we're very proud of him in Sligo. I know he's a Donegal man, but we're very proud of him in Sligo. Oh, he's, he's fantastic, a, a real legend of the club. Uh, you're looking forward I'm, to seeing Seamus? I'm not going to mention the £60,000. You got a bargain there. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> Sorry, Tommy. So, Sorry about that. It's, it's still very sore, but we're, we're OK. We forgive you. Oh, well, hopefully, you know, we can return the favour and That's okay. help with the academy. We're looking for players. Too. We need some players. So yeah. We'll be looking for some. Thank you. That's absolutely brilliant. The shame is he's starting today. Uh, yeah. You're looking forward to watching him out absolutely, there. Absolutely, yeah. Actually, he, he was in our ground there a couple of weeks ago with his kids, and he, where they brought the children in and took some photographs where he used to sit on his bench. So it was a lovely, lovely occasion, yes. It's brilliant. It's wonderful, wonderful ambassador for, for his family, for his, our club, and for your club. He is. I think... When you think of Seamus Coleman, you just think he's an exceptional human being, isn't he? Yes, he's, he's a brilliant, wonderful. brilliant man. Yeah, wonderful. So fantastic representation of, of both these fantastic clubs wonderful. as well. And as you said, you know, your academy are coming to Goodison Park uh, at the end of this month. You're going to be at a, at a game watching Everton versus uh, Manchester City, I believe. Is that yeah, right? Yeah, we fly in on Friday and we're going to play Everton for 14s and Finch Farm. And then we uh, come here Saturday. I think we're going to go Finch Farm in the morning to watch some of the academy games and come here to watch City in the Man City and Everton in the evening and we go to Fleetwood the next day to play a couple of teams there. Paddy has organised that as well. So look, it's going to be a brilliant weekend, a memory these lads will have for the rest of their lives and obviously to come here and watch a live Premier League game as well will be, it'll be something special. That's brilliant. Well, we're really, really looking forward to having you here and, and welcoming you. And hopefully it'll be a positive day for Everton Football Club as well. Guys, Connor, Tommy, thank you so much for joining us. And thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Thank you. It's thank been you. a pleasure. Now we look towards a signing that we made earlier this week and Donny van der Beek. Right, Delhi, welcome to Everton. It's all happened very, very quickly, hasn't it? How did it feel waking up this morning as an Everton player? Uh, yeah, it was a bit surreal. Um, obviously, it was a very long day, but I'm very happy it happened and I'm happy to be here. What was your reaction when you first heard of Everton's interest? Excited, really. Um, I spoke to those people at the club after I heard, and everything was very positive. And yeah, I felt like it was a, a great opportunity, and just praying that it happened, and eventually it did. So 
yeah, when it all got finished yesterday, um, it was just pure excitement and can't wait to get started. Why so much excitement and why does it feel like a great opportunity? Just the way the club is, um, obviously with Frank coming in as well, speaking to him and, you know, the way he wants to play and it felt like it was an amazing opportunity for me to come and felt like I could come and help the team a lot and learn a lot as well. So. You said that you want to be happy playing football again and yeah. you think you can be happy playing at Everton. Why are you confident that will be the case? Like I said, obviously working with Frank and the amazing players they have here, uh, it's a very attacking way of playing football and that's what I like to do, uh, be on the front foot, win tackles, get in the box, score goals. So, yeah, and obviously playing at Goodison Park before, I know the atmosphere and the fans are incredible. So, uh, it's an easy place to be happy and I just want to do well and help the team. So It's an amazing opportunity to come and to work hard and be on the pitch and help the team. Uh, that's all, what I want to do all the time. Um, I want to play, I want to fight for the team and for the club and yeah, I think it's a good opportunity to do that and I'm ready. So, Did you speak to the owner and the chairman at all before signing? Yeah, I spoke to them early on, I spoke to the manager and yeah, so it's, uh, it's all positive. Did you get the impression from them how much they wanted you to play for Everton, the owner and the chairman? Yeah, 100%. Uh, that's what, as a player, that's one of the main things you want. Obviously, you want to be wanted and uh, speaking to the owners and to the, the manager after when he got um, appointed, um, I felt very comfortable and confident. So, um, yeah, I think that's the main thing, especially as an attacking and creative player. You want to you know that you can express yourself and you know, bring excitement to the game with the ball and without it. And that's what I want to do. That's the kind of player I am. Apologies there, obviously that is of course Delhi Ali and not Donny van der Beek. That is the next interview we have lined up. Two brand new players, of course, signing this week. So Delhi Ali, you know, he's a fantastic footballer, isn't he? You look back to sort of four or five years ago and he was one of the best players in this country. So if we can get uh, Delhi Ali back to what he were three years ago, we've got an absolute bargain on our hands. The last two seasons, I've not seen enough of him to make a comment, but both managers have not played him, the previous managers at Tottenham. So that must be saying something because he would have been an automatic pick for uh, Spurs come uh, two years ago. So there's something not right. But hopefully he's come to Everton. He's already said that he can't wait to work for Frank Lampard. He said about these fans are passionate. And I'm telling you, if he produces the goods that he was producing three years ago for Tottenham, God, he'll be a fan's favourite, and I'm sh there's no question about that. But if he puts performances in that he'd been putting in for Tottenham, apparently, because I've not really seen him, apparently, not really putting himself about, not being the Delhi Alley that were fearful against all opposition, these fans will let him know. Yeah. So, it's so entirely up to him. Does he want to be loved or does he not want to be loved? I know what I'd want to be as a player for Everton Football Club. I want to be loved, so go out there and perform. But there's no question about it. He has got the ability to run a game, to win a game. That's what we want. We've not got enough match winners in our, in our squad. He's a match winner and hopefully if he produces the goods, he'll be a bargain. Oh, he could be an absolute bargain, as you said. You know, People will talk about potentially the risks of signing a player that's been out of form and listening to Frank in his press conference as well, he says, you know, make no, no qualms about the fact that there have been issues there in the past and Delhi would openly admit that too. But it's about being looked after in the right way, playing under a manager who is going to nurture the talent mm. and, and bring the best out of him. We saw the two embrace, didn't we? Frank saying yeah. we did it and, you know, embracing Delhi Ali there. Do you think Frank surely is the man if, if someone's going to bring out the best of a player like that? A young, hungry English manager like Frank Lampard, someone that Delhi Ali would have watched growing up. Mm. Um, you know, do you think Frank well, is the man? Well, I, I would like to think so. I know uh, my manager, a young tender age of 16 up to 22, my manager was Billy Bremner. And wow, if you couldn't look up to that guy, I'm sure all the youngsters listening to this couldn't really understand but all the older people will know who Billy Bremner is absolute legend so as soon as he was my manager I looked up to him and went wow this fella I, I can learn off this man I can respect him with the utmost respect and I will go out there and I'll run through a brick wall for that fella I'm hoping Deli Alley's got the same attitude towards Frank Lampard and I'm hoping not only Deli Alley I'm hoping 16 20 25 players at Everton Football Club have got that attitude You've got a manager here, you've got the fans here that just 
want to wish you well, want to win every game, go out there and just do it for them and your new manager. We're dying to get behind the team, dying to get behind everyone and this new era, it, it does feel special. You don't want to get carried away, but you know it's much needed breath of fresh air this week with all the news around the football club. And just quickly, because we're going to hear from him in a moment, but Donny van der Beek as well, we signed on loan from Manchester United, a player that's been linked with Everton for some time now. Looked like he was maybe going to go to Crystal Palace. He's come here to Everton. Another player who's got maybe a little bit of a chip on his shoulder, a little bit of a point to prove. He's here at Everton. Looking forward to seeing him in the next few weeks. Yeah, no disrespect to Crystal Palace. Good football club, but come on. It's Crystal, Everton. Crystal Palace or Everton, do me a favour. <laughs> do me a favour. But no, he's made the right decision in my eyes. But again, don't really know enough about him. Couldn't, couldn't force his way into Man United's team, which... A little bit frustrating for him. It could be a lot frustrating for him because he came as a thirty-five million pound player to Man United. So, but it just shows that what the Man United fans thought about him because when you were watching Man United, they were always singing his name when he was substitute, when he were warming up. So he must have impressed them when he when he has been on. He's got a he's got a great opportunity. All right, it's only a loan period, but who knows? Who knows if he performs for us? Man United make him available. He becomes a favourite. He produces the goods. Who knows, he could be an Everton player, we could make a bid for him and things could happen. Or, if he does do the business, Man United might want him back, unfortunately, but that's the case. But, while he's here on loan, get an arm round him, get him playing, and uh, again, midfield, who, who, who more can he learn off than Frank Lampard? So, uh, great addition, great addition. Fans must be delighted with, uh, with, with the signing of him on loan, and... Uh, I know they can't play today, which is really frustrating. It's so I'd like frustrating, to see, isn't it? Uh, I'd like to see him in action today, but uh, roll on next week. But good performance here. Win three or four nil. Will they get in next week? That's it, you know. That's, it. That's what we want. We That's want this team to play Absolutely. so well that Van der Beek and Deli Ali can't get yeah, the team next totally. week against Newcastle. But we've heard from Delhi. Let's hear it from Donny now. Donny, welcome to Everton. How does it feel to say you're now playing for Everton? Yes, uh, first of all, I'm really happy to be here. Now I can say I'm an Everton player and uh, I'm really happy and I can't wait to help the team. Understandably, a number of clubs wanted to take you from Manchester United, so why did you choose Everton? Uh, now, first of all, I think it's a great club. Uh, yeah, of course, uh, the team of, uh, at the moment... Uh, yeah. Is, is a little bit too low in the league, but still I think uh, there are really good players and uh, yeah, I come uh, because of uh, I want them uh, to help on the way up and uh, also I had a good meeting with, uh, with the coach, with the new coach and uh, yeah, that was really positive and uh, yeah, I, th I think I can help the team. I was going to ask you about the new manager actually, so how much influence did Frank Lampard have on your decision to choose Everton? Uh, on that decision, of course, uh, it was important for me. Um, yeah, we had a good meeting, a long one, and uh, yeah, uh, I think we have the same ideas uh, yeah, about football. And I think I can help the team, and uh, we have great players, uh, so yeah, um, I, want to, uh, I want to help them. What did Frank tell you about his plans for you, and how he sees you fitting into his team? Uh, yeah, um, I play in the past a few uh, games against him. Uh, when I play in Ajax, he was uh, he was uh, in Chelsea at that time, and uh, yeah, uh, we play against each other, so he know me also as a player. And uh, yeah, um, he think uh, that I have some qualities who can help the team, and uh, yeah, uh, I think the same. So uh, let's see. Uh, I have to work hard, and uh, yeah. You'll know what fantastic player Frank Lampard was and the number of goals he scored from midfield. Is he someone you feel you can learn from in your time at Everton? Yes, I think so, because also he was a little bit on the same position, a midfield player who's scoring a lot of goals, and I think also this is uh, an important uh, part of my, of my game. So, yeah, of course, uh, I think he can help me a lot, and um, yeah, so I think uh, I'm on a good spot. Welcome back to Everton Live. I'm absolutely delighted to be joined by former Everton player James Vaughan. James, we've had you on the show before. Thank you so much for coming back on. No problem. Thanks for having me. Oh, it's a pleasure. Now, obviously, massive game today. New era. We know all about everything that's gone on recently. Frank Lampard is, is in charge of the club. 
But we want to talk about the FA Cup and obviously yourself. You were part of that fantastic journey with Everton back in 2009. Um, we reached Wembley twice. We got to the final. You scored one of the penalties that saw us through against Manchester United. Um, talk to us about that occasion at Wembley as well. Obviously, the result wasn't the one we wanted at Wembley on the final day. But how was that as an experience for you being so young as well? Yeah, it was, it was a great experience. I mean, you know, the semi-final was probably... To this day, the greatest day of my career is something I'd, I dreamt about playing at Wembley and to do it for Everton and, and win the game the way we did was was incredible. I mean, you know, the new manager here today broke me out in the final, but yeah. you know, if he can get us to the final and maybe win it, I'll, I'll probably forgive him then. Absolutely. I was just going to say that, you know, obviously we, we made the perfect start to that game, didn't we? Louis Sahar scoring the fastest ever FA Cup goal, then Didier Drogba and Frank Lampard, the new boss, breaking Evertonians' hearts, but... He could make an amends, maybe get us there again and, and hopefully go one step further. Yeah, without doubt. I mean, he's, he's got great credentials, hasn't he? He's won the, won the competition before. He's, he's done everything in the game and hopefully he can bring some of that experience to us and, and help us be successful. That's what we need, isn't it, Everton? We're, we're crying out for success after so long without a trophy. And obviously, I don't want to get too carried away. We know it's a big job ahead of him. We know that we've got a long way to go in this competition as well. But Brentford at home, new manager bounce, fans on board... We've got a good chance to get through to the next round in in that hat again, haven't we? Definitely, I think it's you know a home tie with the new manager, like you say. The fans are going to be right behind us, and you know we'd like to think that we can get a win and take one round at a time. But you know you never know if we can get a trophy at the end of it. Let's hope so. We want to get back to Wembley. We need a day back out there, don't we? It's been far too long. Uh, just on Frank Lampard as well. How do you feel about that appointment? Like most other other Evertonians, you you happy with that one? Yeah, I'm really happy. I mean, his career as a player spoke for itself, and. You know, he's been through every every experience as a player. He, he knows the club. I know he hasn't been part of it before, but he'll, he'll have known the club from afar and knows what we're about. So we're really looking forward to seeing what he can bring to, to the club. Hopefully win starting today. Definitely, yeah. <laughs> James, thank you so much for your time. It's been an absolute pleasure to have you on again. Hopefully no. you're cheering in, on, in them stands later. Be, yeah. Thanks very much. <laughs> thank you. Stick with us for more Everton Live. Oh, it's always great to have Vaughny on. He's a great lad, isn't he? Yeah, oh, he's a top man. Uh, we went to uh, we had a golfing trip out in Marbella, and Vaughny was on it as well. And yeah, great lad, great, great lad. Good family man as well. Loves his kids, uh, but he's he's a great lad. Yeah, I like Vaughny. He is. He had his little lad here actually by the corner flag earlier, getting yeah. the pictures and stuff. I, I want an invite next time to the uh, Marbella golf trip. By the way, I'll can you play golf though? No, I'll caddy. No, no. I just want a bit of sunshine. <laughs> <laughs> But, you know, the, the teams are out behind us now as yeah. well. The atmosphere is building. The fans are getting into their seats. We spoke about this, you know, with the Duncan Ferguson one, the atmosphere was going to be incredible. But as I said, this this is a permanent fixture now, isn't it? Hopefully Frank's going to be here for a long time. At Everton well, that, that's club. what we want. We want stability at this football club. And uh, we're hoping Frank can found, can bring that. A bit of patience is needed by, by us all because yeah. I'm a fan like everybody that's in the stadium. So we need uh, we need Frank to produce the goods so he's here for many, many years. Um, he can't have picked a better football club. I'm sure I'm sure he, he, he's art deep down, he's Chelsea, he's been there. Chelsea for so long, won so many things, been the manager of them, but he'll just realise what this club is all about if we start to be, get some success. I'm sure he'll get a rapturous welcome oh. when he comes out of that, uh, when he comes out of the tunnel this afternoon. And I'm sure they'll be singing his name and hopefully they'll be singing it come quarter to five, ten to five, when we're in the fifth round of the FA Cup. Definitely. Hopefully we're singing uh, Frankie's Barmy Army are going to Wembley and all that <laughs> stuff. That's what we want to see, isn't it? But you speak about Frank Lampard and, and how he knows this football club. He knows what the fans are like. He experienced it. Just mentioned Duncan Ferguson there. You know, when he took over on an interim basis for the first time, we beat Frank Lampard yeah. Chelsea 3-1 here at Goodison Park. The place nearly crumbled to the ground. It was rocking so much. So he knows what this place can be like when you get behind. Will he want to channel that this time, not be on the opposing side, be, be behind him? Sarah, absolutely, because this this place has been quiet for so long. Yeah, it, it really has. And when it is rocking, it rocks. It sure does. And yeah, it rocked that day. And uh, that's what we want. We want the good times back. We want this. We, we've not got long left in this unbelievable stadium and uh, we want it seen rock we want to see it rocking as many times before we leave for our new stadium than, than we, we can and uh, it starts today it starts today let's not disappoint let, let let them players not disappoint it's only the players that can do it now we can give them a lift as fans we can get behind them but the players have got to realize it's them it's them that can start this 
new generation for Everton Football Club and let's start on this long road to success. That's what Everton Football Club wants, deserves and needs is success. And you know, I was speaking to James before about how Frank Lampard actually broke his heart as well as ours uh, in 2009 mm. at Wembley for Chelsea. It'd be a, a weird kind of nice full circle though if, if, if he could go all the way. And as I said as well, I don't want to get carried away. We know there's so many good teams in this competition, but it's the FA Cup. Anything can happen. Form kind of goes out the window a bit. Could Frank be the one to get us back to Wembley and, and potentially win some silverware? Who never knows? Along the way, you're going you're gonna to meet whether it'll be quarterfinals, semi... Let's not get above ourselves. We've got to win today, yeah, just to get in the course. fifth round. But who knows? You've, you'll play somebody of high quality, whether it be in the quarterfinals, semi-final or the final. So you've, you've got to... You, but you can also have a good, good run of draws. Yeah. Once them balls get pulled, if you get an home tie, the next one after that, and you're thinking... Yeah, that's championship club or whatever. You might have a little bit of luck in that department, but it's about winning football matches. The ones up. I don't want to go to X time. I don't want to no. go to penalties. No. But as you seen Man United last night. Anything can happen in penalties. It was, they were great. The penalties were, were good, but they went out. I don't want to see extra time. I definitely don't want to see penalties today. I want to see us beat Brentford. I don't care whether it's 1 0 in the last minute I don't care as long as we win and we're in that eye it doesn't have to be a superb spectacle for me the FA Cup is all about winning yeah. winning that game and that's the most important thing today it is you know we want to be in that hat for the next round we want to see Everton as you know we'll get to Wembley ultimately that's where we want to be isn't it uh, that man there Seamus Coleman on the screen as you can see he starts today how amazing would it be to see him lift a trophy with Everton you know for everything he's done and achieved with the football club it would be really really special wouldn't it for that man to be able to to, to bring some silverware home for Everton whilst he's still with us I remember Seamus Coleman probably four five years ago asking me what was it like uh, to lift the league championship I'd only been here five months when I got a, got a taste of lifting and holding the league championship he asked Graham Sharp, what was it like to win a trophy? What were the fans like in that in that period? Sharp says, Seamus, unbelievable. He said, that's all I want now. He said, I've been here all these years. I've captained them for all these years. I can't do any more. I just want to touch a trophy and lift a trophy for Everton Football Club. That would be his pinnacle of his career now. So hopefully he could. I know we've uh, we got the chairman of Sligo here who you've just yes. interviewed. So it'd be great for Seamus to play well, score a goal yeah. in front of uh, his former his former club all them years ago, 60,000. I asked the chairman, actually, if he'd got another bargain for us over in Sligo. <laughs> um, but he said, you'll never get one like Seamus <laughs> ever again. And you won't. He's been, he's been absolutely brilliant. Hopefully, uh, he, can, uh, he can have a good game today. Uh, Frank believes in Seamus. I'm sure, I'm sure he's talked to Seamus a lot since he arrived at the club, being, being one of the... The older players now, the the senior players at the club, so I think he'll have listened to Seamus on on a few things as well, and uh, he's put him in the team today. He has, you know, it's it's brilliant to see Seamus there. As I said, 13 years, uh, he's been incredible. an incredible servant for the club, a fantastic human being as well. As I always mention, I think everyone who's ever spoke to him and, and knows him can can vouch for that. And it just would be fantastic to see him lift the trophy. He deserves it. The man is already a legend, but to get uh, silverware with Everton would just make it. Now we got Richie there uh, he scored a fantastic goal a few weeks back against Norwich unfortunately it wasn't the result we wanted but a brilliant acrobatic uh, shot you know he was back in the team back in the goals he's someone we're obviously looking to today aren't we to lead from the front and uh, try and try and get a goal for him yeah I'm hoping we got the Richarlison I hope somebody upsets him in the first two minutes I hope somebody kicks him or makes him angry because that's when Richarlison's at his best yeah. if he's in a little comfort zone and it, people leave him alone just trying to drift in and out of the game but if somebody upsets him all of a sudden the red miss and he's he's all over he wants to put defenders under pressure I hope somebody kicks him in the first two minutes <laughs> not to injure him before he comes off but just to give him that fire yeah. in his belly because when Richie's like that he's an handful yeah, he and uh, so uh, I'm expecting him to get on the score sheet today I love that I, I, I am He's like us, isn't he? Us Evertonians love a bit of injustice. We love a, we love seeing someone get kicked or something so we can get angry and get behind yeah. them. And, you know, I think this place today really will be... You know, if we start on the front foot, which I think we will, and I hope we will, Frank Lampard likes to play very progressive, very aggressive football, good in possession, good in the press. This place could be 
you know, electric. Do you know what, Sarah? A couple of weeks ago, I don't think they'd have been nowhere near I, a full a full house in this uh, in this stadium. I think with the appointment, the new players we got before transfer deadline. I know Brentford have sent plenty of tickets back. They couldn't sell their allocation. They were snapped up within minutes. Yeah. So that just shows what, what this club's all about. They just want success. They just want to see a team to be proud of. And uh, I'm fed up of going home and being miserable. Yeah. I really am. And it spoils your weekend. It spoils your week when Everton Football Club get beat. And I'm fed up of it. Yeah. I, I, want, I, want, to, I, want, to, I want to go home after the victory and I want to be proud I want to have a big smile on my face and I'm hoping to walk away from here tonight probably an hour after after the game I want to have a biggest smile on my face ever and feel as though I can't wait for the draw I don't know when it is is it Sunday, Monday? Is it tomorrow? Is is it tom- it? Yeah. yeah, I don't know when it is but I want to sit by that tally and watch the Everton Football Club coming out in the fifth round I don't want to be not watching TV and watching that draw so come on boys get your fingers out come on we want to see that hat that's what we want absolutely FA Cup I was saying before I just absolutely love the FA Cup they, they, say, they say it's lost its spark no it has not lost its spark look in the last round some of the teams that progress you know Kidderminster the likes of teams like that you know absolutely well they fantastic. were leading West Ham I don't know what it's ended up they were still winning 1-0 they... into the second half against West Ham Kidderminster I don't know see. what it's ended up so that just shows what it's all about that's the 9,000 fan, uh, 9,000 Middlesbrough fans that went to Old Trafford yesterday. Exactly. What the FA Cup Ronaldo means on a, Friday, a on a Friday night. The yeah. FA Cup is the be all, well, it's not the be all and end all. The Premier League is now, and the, but the FA Cup has still got its glamour for me. I, I was brought up loving the FA Cup. I still love the FA Cup. Come on, give me a bit of it. Come on, I'll give me a bit of it. Absolutely, <laughs> I love that. You know, and and Brentford, obviously, it's it's a massive game for them as well. As I say, they will sort of maybe have one eye on on the Premier League as well and and try and ensure that they've got safety. But I think when it comes to it, a match day, you just want to go out there and win. They'll want it as much as we do, won't they? Of course they will. Do you know what? They have done superb. We're talking about Brentford Football Club. I remember playing against them in the lower leagues, Division 3, Division 4, Brentford. They've come massive strides. They've, They've got a good team. They've got a good manager, positive. The structure, their infrastructure behind the recruitment is fantastic. So hats off. They have done remarkably well. I I'm not bothered about that today. No. I, I, for how well they've done, I don't care. It's all, about, <laughs> it's all about us today. It is. It's all about Everton Football Club getting the next round. I keep repeating myself, getting the next round. Don't care how it's done, getting that next getting that out. That's what we need. And as you said, you know, Thomas Frank and Brentford have done exceptionally well uh, and they're, they're a great club, but we hope they go home miserable today. There's no doubt about that. We want Everton in the next round. If you could pick a score for me today, what are you going to go for? Well, I don't want my nerves to be near the end, thinking, is it going to be extra time penalties? I want, a, I want a comfortable win, but then I don't want to get greedy. I just want to, be, I just want to get through. So I'm going to go for 2-0. Two 2-0. Nil. Two nil. I'm going to go for 2-0. We take that all day, especially, you know, goals. We've been conceding too yeah, many we goals, have. haven't we, as a, as a club? So I, I want to see us today be defensively solid. I want to see the back three talking to each other I want to see Jordan Pickford being commanded I don't want to concede a goal I really don't so and I'm hoping the boys at the other end produce the good so I'm going 2-0 Sarah 2-0 we take that all day long I think you know we're chanced to win today first and foremost we're in the round we're in the hat for the next round sorry but going into next week two massive games I don't want to look too far ahead but in terms of our Premier League yeah. Newcastle away leads at home on the Saturday if we get a win today and a clean sheet it's going to it's going to breed confidence into that squad isn't it? It is because Newcastle have made quite a few signings uh, recently Burnley just before the, so it's, it's going to be tough it, it, up at Newcastle yeah. but you mentioned them and Leeds the boat down, down there Watford play Burnley tonight which is a, a crucial game. We've, unfortunately, we've got to look at games like this at the minute yeah. because of the position we're in. We're hoping for a draw between them two. And how sad is it that Everton Football Club are looking at Burnley and Watford to hopefully have a draw? It's not right, is it? It isn't right, but it is right because we're in that That's position. Where, yeah. That's where we stood at the minute. So, But if we can go to Newcastle and produce and, and win the game and, and win our home game against Leeds, then that gives you a little cushion then. So, yeah, today's massively important but the next two league games are massive. They're six-pointers. They are, absolutely. Well, back to today's game and Brentford. And here is what manager Frank Lampard had to say. 
Well, welcome to Everton, Frank. And you, you've been in this position before, coming into a club where things are perhaps a little fractured between the players, the club, the supporters. How important is it then a good start? It's important. Um, we've talked a lot about unity. I have um, the sense of the place this week. The players, uh, the club, and the fans are just turning up here on, on the coach there. It feels like it's unified, um, but the only thing that matters is getting out there and playing. So it's, it's important we have a good start. And we're playing against a very good team, so it's important that we don't get disappointed if things don't go perfectly. But what we have to do is show an intensity in our game and a togetherness. That's what the fans always feed off first here, and the players know that. Eight players missing today, including the two new boys who are cup tied. So the players that you have available are essentially the players who have been playing all season. Mm. Have you had to give them much of a lift this week? Well, I've tried to. It's the reason that, that we're here. And um, I'm very happy with the reaction that we've had in training. It means nothing until we perform out there. But behind the scenes, the players have, have trained really well, shown good confidence. We're ready, as ready as could be this week. And um, yeah, even with the players that we have out, um, I had tough selections to make through the way that they've trained. So um, we have good options to start, good options to come off the bench. Let's see. Yeah, in the league, things are a little closer than you would, I'm sure, like them to be to the bottom of the table. You've got an FA Cup match today. You have gone with a strong squad. You know all about this competition. What can it bring to the club to have a good run in the FA Cup? Well, confidence, engagement with the fans is romantic. This club has won the FA Cup. Um, not for a while, but it's won it and it's capable of winning it. Um, we have to treat every game uh, with the utmost respect and, and approach it in the proper way. So I was going to do nothing else but do that, try and pick as I see the best team for, for the game. As I said, we have options. We know we have a game in a few days. But our absolute focus is on this. This is a, um, a competition that, that is, is one of the most beautiful in football and the, the history of it. So um, we'll approach it in a way, and I'm sure the fans feel it already, very up for it. So there you have it, there he is, Frank Lampard ahead of this one, looking to take Everton through to the next round and start his reign as Everton manager with a win. I am going to be at Walton Hall Park tomorrow, make sure you get yourselves there. Everton women are in action against Reading women following a massive victory in the FA Cup last weekend, 4-0 against Huddersfield and some fantastic goals in there. So join me, get yourself to Walton Hall Park, 1 o'clock kickoff tomorrow. But for now, back to the FA Cup, back to Brentford. Up Frank Lampard's toffees. Thank you for watching Everton Live and we'll see you on Saturday for Leeds. Come on!